Welcome back to another multimeter review. Yes, it is a cheapo multimeter review yet again. Today in the cheapo spotlight, we have the Alsa EM3215 pen probe style digital multimeter. Now, what does pen probe mean exactly? Well, take a good long look at this meter, folks. And what do you think it means? That's right, it means butt ugly. Yeah, this is one ugly looking meter. I'm sorry, this is real ugly. This is so ugly, only a mother can love this meter. Wow, anyway, we're gonna take a look at what's on the inside as well and see if this meter is as bad as it looks. Stay tuned. The Alsan ships in your standard plastic enclosure, which easily comes off. And Alsan definitely reminds us that it has data hold functionality and there is a nice 80s early 90s era floppy diskette. So I don't know if that's really instilling any confidence, but probably not. You don't get much with this meter. You get the attached probes and a little pamphlet, as you can see. And it is just a very, very quick one over of the basic functionality of the meter itself. So the first thing you'll probably notice, or not, is the fact that the probe tips are both black. I'm not really sure why Alsun did not replace the positive terminal with a red terminal cover, but for some reason they decided to ship them both in the negative black. So yeah, that's kind of a, a little weird to start things off. Ergonomically speaking, this is a pretty um, awkward meter to deal with. It has a very large, wide grip. And honestly, there's really nothing ergonomic about this meter. The way they've designed it, shape-wise, it just doesn't work. Don't really know where to put your hand. And honestly, I think they could have done so much better with the design. This, for me at least, is just bloody awful. Test leads themselves are unmarked, unrated. There is no gauge rating on them. The actual uh, rubber is horribly cheesy, cheap feeling. Um, just honestly feels like complete garbage. The leads themselves, really not much better. Extremely um, cheap feeling. They do have a current rating of a maximum 10 amps, but um, yeah, honestly. And they have a Cat 2 600 volt. But once again, it just feels terribly cheap. If we took it, take a look at the other end, we look at the probe tip itself. And I mean, can you hear this? I'm not really doing much, but it sounds like a duck, right? So it's it's just, you know, very, very cheaply done. Poor implementation, um, not sharp at all, quite dull. And ah, we'll see what it's like on continuity, but I don't have too many high hopes for this guy. With the M3215, you start off in the off position. Right away, it switched to volts, and it is volts DC. And you can change that by hitting the select function. And as you can see, we go to volts AC. Next up is the resistance or ohm setting. Now this only has a paltry measly rating of 20 mega ohm. So eh, once again, kind of a fail. Heading down, we're in continuity and diode, and we will test those both out shortly. Finally, it brings us to the milliamp setting. This only has a maximum of 200 milliamps. So really not a heck of a lot. Finally, we have a logic tester. So this can actually double as a logic probe. You may or may not find that very useful. Speaking of the function set as well, you do have both a flashlight. Now the problem with this flashlight, as you can see, is you have to keep holding the button. As soon as you let that button go, the light turns off. The backlight itself is fairly crisp. Um, it stays on for approximately 20 seconds and then, yeah, lights out in Georgia. Speaking of the display, you know, it's not bad. There's not a whole lot of glare. It's not really ultra crisp either. Um, it's just your basic kind of nothing too fancy look. Uh, I can, once again, I think they could have done a little bit better in this department. Um, it looks a little long in the tooth. One thing I do like about this pen style meter is the actual tactile feeling of the probe itself. It has a really nice rubberized, but not too rubbery feeling. It feels um, 
really good. Now, that's pretty well the only good thing about this because honestly, the rest of the meter just feels like crap. I mean, it has such a light weight to it. If you were gonna put this down and there was some sort of a wind gust come along, you better hang on because baby, this thing's gonna go. It's just super, super, super light. In fact, as you can see, just putting it down, the wires themselves seem to be heavier than the meter. What the heck? To gain access to the battery terminal, we have one tiny Phillips screw, which once removed, tells us that we have a fully threaded insert, so that's pretty good. Plop it up, and where the heck did it go? We're not quite sure. Did not ship with the battery, but as you can see... So we have two of the old school standard spring style mechanism to actually make contact with the PCB. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's a Start things off, we're going to look at a basic DC voltage accuracy test. And I have the precision reference out. And we are set right now to the millivolt position. 250 millivolts is what we should be seeing. And we are seeing pretty close, 249. Next up, we are in the voltage side of things. 2.5 volts is exactly what we want to see. So at least accuracy wise, the all sun is spot on. AC voltage test is next and we are showing pretty close to 120 volts AC. Next up is resistance mode. Yeah, resistance. Gotta love our resistance. First, I'm gonna try railing out the leads. Perfect. So that's a good sign. Next, we'll put it up against this tiny 0.5 ohm resistor. Next up is diode mode. Start off with these standard diodes. Here we go. So there's the forward voltage drop, no problem. So you can tell with a pen probe style meter such as this, it does get a little bit awkward. Something that's normally quite easy to test becomes more problematic. So let's look at these LEDs and no forward voltage indicator and no illumination on the green. Same thing for the yellow. Same for the red. The white. Finally the blue we have nothing so yeah in terms of LED testing it is complete crap looking at the output voltage for the all sun we can see it's giving us about 1.5 volts so one and a half volts and yeah just not enough, not enough juice to do much with LEDs continuity is next yes alrighty I'm not expecting too much really I'm not I mean the quality of this uh, lead uh, so yeah not expecting much here we go with the default leads so if I just hold down and press we have continuity but I really gotta press I mean god I gotta press uh. So yeah, complete shite if you're uh, doing any sort of serious continuity testing. Eh, fail. Looking into the milliamp range, we are currently sitting at 180 milliamps and no worries there with the all sun. Now remember this only has a 200 milliamp rating. So really can't go much higher than this unless you want to blow a fuse. Speaking of fuses, I think it's about time we took a look on the inside. First of all, what went through my mind is how stupid am I to actually volunteer for this. Oy vey gave. Okay, we're finally in. And yeah, I don't know why they're always hiding that screw. These darn little QC symbols that really don't mean squat. But anyway. Alrighty, so let's take it apart. And... Yeah, come on. There we go. Oh, wow. All right. That was fun. 
<sighs> Starting off with the top of the back cover, you can see, once again, no shielding. Yeah. Take a look at how close that transistor is to the chassis itself. It's literally side by side, right on top of it. So yeah, that's a little too close for comfort. What's it like in terms of input protection, you might ask? Well, not too good. We have one lonely, cheesy looking little PTC over here. And finally, on the milliamp side of things, we have our 250 volt, 250 milliamp glass fuse. As well, we have a couple of dials for reverse input protection if you put the 9 volt battery in the wrong way. But that is pretty well it. Speaking of logic, we we'll take a look at the bottom here. This is the HEF4011B. That's a quad 2 input NAND gate. And directly on top of that bad boy, we have our 74HC14, which is a hex inverting Schmidt trigger right there. Finally, last but not least, we have a dual op amp over here. And over here, we have one inductor. And uh, yeah, that's strictly uh, it. Yeah, if people are interested in inductors, really nothing more than a ferrite core covered by wire coil. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Let's take a look at that fabrication date here at the bottom. EM3215 is the model number and 080821. So I'm assuming this is August 21st, 2008 is the uh, date on this PCB. So that's pretty old. We're talking over 10 years old still being sold as a brand new meter. I don't see anything in terms of revision. Of course, right here we have our piezo or speaker. And finally over here is the uh, tin can, as we like to call them, or crystal oscillator. Bunch of transistors and other SMD components, capacitors, resistors, what have you. A couple of dials at top. Okay, we're on the other side of the PCB and we're starting off with the rotary selector tracks, as you can see. They look fine, it looks like tin, fairly well spaced apart. Um, here we have the LCD inputs, and this is just part of the LCD display on this side. And of course that's the coil springs to attach to the battery. And the soldering job is kind of so-so. Um, oh no, it's okay. Definitely nothing to get ultra excited about. Going deeper inside, here is the actual rotary selector switch itself. And here are the switches. We have a total of six of them, and they are also screwed in uh, by two Phillips to the selector knob itself. Buttons themselves are a nice rubbery tactile feel, and they're right here. Here's the Zebra or Elastomar, and that is what feeds the LCD display. So that's pretty well it. Standard ABS on the inside, and uh, there you go. We'll put it back together and give you my closing thoughts. Final thoughts on the Allsun EM3215. Well, you know, I'm not even disappointed because I really wasn't expecting much. Now, overall, you could do so much better. I'm still looking for that really good pen style multimeter. This is definitely not it. It's horrible continuity, cheaply put together, feels cheap. Not too many really positive things to say. Doesn't do a lot in the range department only does milliamps up to 200 and I mean I can go on and on hey save your money save your time don't bother with this one the EM3215 gets a paltry 1.5 out of 5 Ooh. thanks for watching this review everybody I love the comments I love the feedback I love the user support many thanks to everybody who's contributed and hey best of all keep on testing hmm okay now where in the heck do I put this thing? So confusing. No, no. Ah.